Joel Embiid said yesterday on ESPN that it's amazing the Sixers now have Paul George, a player who isn't afraid to take, make big shots when the ball is kicked out to him from the post. Embiid also admitted that the team's lack of playoff success throughout his time in Philly has weighed on him. He said, I'd be lying to say that patience wasn't tested because I'm at the point where there's no awards, there's no regular season or no all NBA or all stars is going to change the way my legacy is. Well, there's a few things that can change it, but the main one is the championship. Rachel, please give us your read on what Joel said. I can agree more with him about the fit. It's remarkable. And this is why we had this conversation months ago. And I said, I really hope Paul George ends up in Philadelphia, not because I wanted anything to go wrong with the Clippers, but just the fit was so tantalizing between them. And when we talk about fit, we talk normally about, you know, someone who's additive, mm -hmm. right? Who does something that the other guys don't do. And Paul George is additive. He adds something that they don't do. He is also a multiplier, though. He is going to make Joel Embiid better. And Joel referred to it a little bit in the interview. He was talking about maybe being healthier. That was another mm -hmm. point that I loved about this. You know, Key, you and I were talking, and you said, oh, Kawhi and Joel, how much of a difference is it injury-wise? I think that Joel's injuries, some of them come from exhaustion and overuse. We've seen that, not the early ones, but the ones recently. The biggest criticism of him has been that he gets tired late in playoff series. Yep. When you have Paul George there taking some of the banging that was previously only focused on Joel Embiid, being around to play an extra game that mm. Joel now can take off to heal from the knick-knack injuries he does have, the reason that he got knacked out for this past season was because he had a much more minor injury and he felt pressure to come back the next night and next game and he came back too soon. So a lot of that kind of stuff is gonna change things. As Joel said, you can kick, some, kick out the ball to him, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. The patience part I thought was interesting. Understandable though, and he elaborated a little bit about how there was a real crisis point in his thinking when it came down to the hardened trade demand. Because all of a sudden, you have management who's in a position now to possibly have to trade Harden, and they had already, previous regime had traded away Jimmy Butler. These are guys that he really yep. liked and that who mm -hmm. he jived with, and they hadn't had the playoff success. He went to, he and Daryl Morey had an honest conversation, and Daryl laid out his plan to leave all this cap space and sort of have things set up so they could get a guy like Paul. But as Joel said, you can have plans. Those plans don't always work out. So I think that's why his patience was tested through all these years. But I just think Paul George takes care of so many of those things. And I think that he will make Joel better. He'll make Tyrese better, I just think. And then he's added if he adds so much to His him. patience will get tested again, though, Rachel, if he doesn't get his ass in shape. Well. Right? I mean, that's, that's really, I'm gonna that's keep saying really. He's, he's in better shape than he was. No, no, I get was. that. But, but it's really, when he says a frustration, he should be frustrated with himself. Because when he's not there, they're not there. Mm -hmm. like, like, I haven't seen a dominant big like this mm -hmm. since Shaq. No, I you mean, haven't. He's... Like, I mean, I get, I he's get, MVP. you know, I'm talking about like dominant. I'm not talking Joker's won MVPs in the championship, but not in, with the force that this uh, kid can come with. Joel was scoring more than a point a minute before yes. he got knocked out with this. So team. when you look at it from that standpoint, yeah, there's going to be frustration. But I'm serious about it. You got to figure out, because that's all I hear is about his diet and this and the that, and, and that's why he stays hurt and all. He's got to figure that out. If he can figure that out, they're not too far off with Maxie and now with Paul George and whatever other little crumbs that you got laying around. You know, you got a coach that's won a championship before. He knows how to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's all to me, it, it's all about him getting into top tip shape. Like just mm -hmm. figure it out. Shaq went through it before mm -hmm. where everybody was like, oh, even to Kobe, basically he said, man, you gotta get your ass in shape. He did. And then once he got in shape, it was, was a different dude. It was, it was over. And this is the same thing that Agreed. applies to Joel and B. Yeah. Yes, getting getting Paul George is huge because it allows him, much like you said, Rachel, if he needs a minute or two. Rest. He doesn't have to a night or day or whatever. Doesn't have to. Imagine if they would have had let him rest a little bit more against the Knicks, and they had a Paul George to go along with a Maxi. They probably come out of that Maybe. thing clean. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe come out of it cleaner. Maybe. I mean, that's just you know, Embiid tried, but he was bangs out there on one leg and still and still giving him fits. So I I start with the health part for him though. He's mm. got to.
how to get his butt in shape to stay healthy. Yeah. So I chuckled at Joel's line about my patience was has been tested in the postseasons. Well, trust me, <laughs> the patience of everybody around you has this been even more bad. tested. Yes. And I'm so with you. I, I am his biggest fan and sometimes his harshest critic constructively because I see so much there. And it's going to come and it's going to go. And it's going to be over before you know it. And he'll be too old. But, but he's in his prime right now. And you have to understand, as you know about being a professional athlete, you, you have to be able to step back from it and embrace the fact my window is way open right now. And I have to maximize who I can be because I can be Shaquille O'Neal. I, I was the MVP. I thought he could have won it two years in a row. I thought he could have won it the previous year from Joker. But the, the point is, th this is the time. You, you got it. And, and Daryl Morey keeps saying, well, okay, let me try this. And I'll, I'll give you this. And James Harden didn't work. Okay, so I'll go get Paul George. And I love this team, man. Like you said, the, the fit is great. Tyrese has come into his own. I, I like Caleb Martin. He'll, he'll fit for them. Yeah, All Caleb the pieces. Caleb Martin is not a crumb. No. You say the crumbs that they yeah. have on the rest of the roster. Yeah, not a crumb. Not a crumb. No. When you mention in the Sixers, you mentioned in three people. I'm, I'm just saying not a crumb is all. I, I'm going to say this again. Joel Embiid is in better shape and has better off-season habits than he used to. That is just a fact. Well, that may not does be he have, a whole lot, but does he whatever. Have, does he have another gear to go yes. to? I certainly could. The good I'm thing. not an expert in that, but, yeah. but certainly it seems as if he could. And I do think that Paul being there is going to help him keep sort yeah. of in better yeah. shape all, yeah. all the way around. Absolutely. Okay, because... His seat just got a little hotter because at well, some now, point you're going to step back and say, hey, they, they keep giving you all the you got all this swirling around you. you, you now you got to you got to be right. We'll take you. Yeah. Well, would you? <laughs> Is that what you're angling toward? He'll flame out in Philly. And wind yeah, up in we'll take you. Come on out west. OK. All right. In a moment, Dan Hurley's new UConn contract appears to be. Wait, considerably less than what the Lakers offer him? Hmm. Now, our honor and our pleasure to welcome in Devontae Adams of the Las Vegas Raiders. Devontae will be featured in a Netflix docuseries that drops tomorrow. It's fittingly called Receiver. Good morning to you, Devontae. We appreciate you. Could you please start us off by giving us some idea of what Receiver is all about? Well, I'm sure most of the audience probably heard of, at least if they haven't seen the quarterback. So it's a little bit of a spinoff of that. Um, only difference is this one is a lot more interesting, obviously. Um, <laughs> got some of the some of the most dynamic players in the world um, getting together. Um, you know, me, JJ, George, Amon Ra, and Debo. Mm. A little bit of everything, man. It's, it's going to be a little bit of our, our lives, get a little peek of our lives, get to watch us practice a little bit. Watch us interact, um, you know, with the, the within the organization. A little bit of trash talk on the field, and just mm -hmm. kind of ultimately get inside the mind of, uh, you know, an elite athlete and in the, in the way we attack our our business every single day. So mm. I had a great time filming it. Honestly, it wasn't my first choice coming into it because I'm kind of a private guy and I don't really have a lot of my stuff out there in the in the mm. open for everybody to see. I kind of pride myself on being a little bit more mysterious. But um, when when my, I talked to my wife, I talked to some of my friends, family. Even some of my teammates, they all encouraged me doing it. So mm. um, definitely, definitely glad we did it. So, uh, Tay, do they do they catch you at the house with the kids, going around, school, taking them to school, some of that stuff? A little bit of everything, man. We had um, my, my daughter's uh, fourth birthday at the house. Um, so we got to catch some reactions cool. of some of, the, some of her, her classmates and their parents that didn't know that, you know, I was who I was. They, they see my wife dropping <laughs> off my daughter at school. And she said, hey, you want to come to, to the house for my daughter's for Deja's birthday party? And they go, oh, yeah, of wow. course. And they get, they, they get the address, and then they show up at the house, and they're like, the heck is going on here? Like, I, just, I didn't expect <laughs> this. Though. And then you have the ones that obviously did know, and, you know, it's, it's cool to kind of invite them in, um, have them follow us around, going to gymnastics class, um, you know, just a little, little peek inside our lives, man. It's, it's, it's real cool. Very cool. So talk some Raiders. What will it mean to you? that Antonio Pierce is now officially your head coach? I mean, we really just picking up where we left off. And it yeah. wasn't a whole lot in my mind where I was thinking, you know, any other um, possibility, really, just based off of the way, I mean, you see how it looked, the, you know, 
the week before he got, you know, made the head guy. And, and then the week after it was, it was two totally different products out there.